Cool. Welcome back, everybody, to another exciting session of CE 374U Urban Stormwater. How's everyone doing today? You're good. I know there's some there's some tests going on right now, so uh, stay strong. Um, we're almost 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 to the end. Um, well, except not really. You still have a couple of weeks left, but um, getting getting fairly close to the end. So a couple uh, a couple announcements before we get started. Homework six. I'm postponing until next Friday because I feel like uh, I'd like to give you a couple more class days to work on this homework. Um, so I've posted the grade scope assignment for that, and you can submit that uh, when ready. This is a group assignment, so you'll submit as a group. Um, and under the heading for the problem, so under the heading for each problem, you'll just post the name or names of the group members who worked on each individual design. So for problem 6.1, you'll have two sections, each with uh, attribution to the person who did that preliminary design. Uh, similarly, for problem 6.2, you will have attribution for who did that design and same for problem 6.3. Okay, are there any questions on homework six or how you're going to turn it in? Any questions? Okay, and I will soon be posting an extra credit homework assignment. Uh, again, this is on the EPA stormwater management model, which is another extremely important model if you're going to be working in the stormwater space. Um, so I will post that soon and that will be due on the last day of class. I will give you a recorded lecture to go along with that assignment. Uh, just to give you the background needed to work with the EPA stormwater management model. Okay. Are there any questions on the extra credit assignment? Yes. <laughs> no, I, I, I'll just add uh, basically the points. Um, I'll just add, yeah, add points according to about half the homework assignment. Uh, Assuming that all all of that uh, submission is correct, yeah. Okay. Cool. Any questions on homework? Uh, I'll also be posting uh, more detailed guidelines on the project presentation in the coming week or so. So just keep an eye out for that, and I'll give an announcement. Yes. There's a paper due uh, and it'll be due, uh, officially due on the last day of class, uh, but I will accept the report without penalty up until the day of our final, uh, which I believe is December 8th at 11.59 PM. Don't quote me on that, but it's in the uh, project report. Uh, it's, in the, it's in the project uh, description on Canvas, uh, which I can just pull up right now, actually. Let's see. So if you go under project, uh, project, so this will give you, um, yeah, so due date officially Monday, December 5th, 2022 by 11.59 p.m. Uh, for the project reports, um, you can turn it in without penalty up to December 8th, 11.59 p.m., okay? All right. Any any other logistical questions? Mm -hmm. Yes, I'll give that I'll give that information uh, within the next week or so. Yeah. Uh, and I'll just be selecting randomly, um, unless there's um, you know unless any group has a strong reason why they need to go on a particular day. Okay, any other questions about the course project? Okay, uh, I'm gonna let you work on your course projects for the majority of the time today. First, before we do that though, I wanted to give a quick um, a quick little tutorial for those of you working on the detention basin design, um, because this again is one of the harder parts of the course project. And I just wanted to give you an example idea of how you might go about implementing uh, a detention basin specifically in the in the diversion configuration. So I would recommend doing this part of the project, the detention basin modeling in HEC HMS. 
So that's what I'm going to be showing you because you need to understand um, when you're doing the design, ultimately how the change in the detention basin outflow affects the flow at your low water crossing. And the easiest way to do that is by modeling it in FACHMS um, so that you can get the flows at the portions of the network that correspond to your HECRAS model. So I'll very quickly just go through how you might think about doing a detention basin design in HECHMS, specifically a diversion type basin. Uh, I won't go through the details because I want you to kind of work on it and figure it out on your own, but I want to at least show you the elements that you'll need and how you might kind of connect them together, okay? So I'm going to use um, Boggy Creek as an example. And let's open up our Boggy Creek model. So this is pretty large. Um, and let's say that we have our low water crossing. Let's say that we know our low water crossing is on this reach here. And we want to figure out how we can build a diversion type basin to route flow around the low water crossing or possibly just attenuate the flow um, coming through that um, reach and junction. So there's a couple different elements within the HEC HNS model you can use to do that. Uh, the most relevant ones are the following. Uh, first, the reservoir tool. So that's right here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new uh, reservoir. And let me just scroll up here a second and zoom in. Okay, so we have our reservoir tool. I'm just going to put a reservoir down here. Uh, for the name, I'm just going to call it new reservoir. Okay, and this will essentially represent a storage basin or a dam or an impoundment or something of that nature. Um, it'll work similar to the detention basin that you worked on for homework uh, five, right? It's, it's doing the same basic thing. Okay, the other tool that will be useful is the diversion. And essentially what this allows you to do is it allows you to split flow coming in from some number of inputs into two outputs. So you'll have flow coming in from a reach, for instance, and we'll split that into two outflows and we'll figure out how to proportion the flow between those. Um, so to do that, we go over to the diversion tool here. I'm gonna go ahead and create a diversion. Uh, and let's just call it new diversion. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the outflow from this junction here, this is labeled um, JTAN 160. I'm going to take it and I'm going to reroute it to go to the diversion. So I'm going to select the downstream element as new diversion. And if I click over here, it'll reroute it. Um, then I'm going to take our new diversion and I'm going to connect it downstream to this reach here. So the downstream of this diversion will be this reach. So let's go ahead and do that. For downstream, this is reach RTAN 170. So I'm just gonna take this, I'll select downstream as, let's find it here, RTAN 170. And you'll see when I did that, it rerouted it. Now what I'm gonna do is for this diversion, I'm gonna take this. So notice there's two, there's two selections here. One is downstream and the other is connection. So basically the, the portion of flow that's gonna go into connection is our diverted flow and everything else is going to go into the downstream element. So we'll, we'll select a method for how to divert the flow in a second, but basically connection means where the diverted flow goes to, downstream means where the remainder of the flow goes to after your diversion. So for connection, I'm gonna select new reservoir because we're diverting into this reservoir. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. And then for the reservoir, we got to connect this downstream. So I'm going to connect it uh, to the downstream junction JTAN 170 here. Um, find that. Okay, and when I did that, now we have um, basically, whereas before we just had a channel connecting JTAN 160 to JTAN 170, we now have a diversion that splits off some of that flow into a reservoir and then that reroutes downstream to the downstream junction. So this will allow us, for instance, if our low water crossing is on this reach, it will divert some of that flow away from the low water crossing. 
Um, so this is a tool you can use for that purpose. Now, there's a couple of things I kind of skipped over here. First, we have to select basically how much flow we're going to divert or how to figure that out. Uh, and there's a couple of different diversion methods. There's, um, for instance, lateral weir. So it'll basically simulate a lateral weir that allows water to flow over the side. Um, for that, you need to specify the elevation, the length of the weir, uh, weir coefficient, and the channel rating curve, which describes the relationship between the discharge and the depth in the channel. So you'll need kind of a lot of information for that one. Um, another option is a pump station. So you can actually specify that you want to pump water uh, into a, your reservoir. That's probably not really practical. What I would actually recommend is the inflow function. And basically this allows you to specify just some um, inflow function that relates the inflow to the diversion to the amount of diverted flow. So you put this in as a table basically, and this goes in under paired data. Um, so you can see there's already one in there, diversion to bog the ID. Uh, you would probably wanna create your own uh, diversion inflow function. Okay, are there any questions about the, the diversion element? I know I'm going through this fast, but I kind of want you to explore and figure this out uh, on your own. Any questions? Okay. The other part um, that I kind of skipped over is how the reservoir operates. So much like we did for homework five, you need to actually specify what the storage area relationship is in the reservoir as well as what the outflow um, elevation relationship is in the reservoir. So there's a couple different options for doing that. So for the method, um, method basically describes uh, how you're determining how much outflow comes out of the reservoir. You can either select an explicit outflow structure to model like an orifice, or you can use an outflow curve where you basically just specify the storage discharge relationship. I would recommend doing that. Um, similarly, the storage method, this basically just gives you a, um, a way of specifying the dimensions of the reservoir. So you have the choice between elevation area discharge, elevation storage discharge, and storage discharge. I would probably recommend selecting storage discharge and then just computing the storage discharge relationship on your own. Um, because if you select elevation area discharge, for instance, you need an elevation area function. And unfortunately, this is specified in terms of the elevation above sea level. And so you need to figure out um, basically where the reservoir's bottom is in relation to everything else on the network. So that can be a bit uh, challenging because HackHMS isn't always the best about giving information about where the elevation of the different elements are. So I would recommend using um, storage discharge and just an example, we can select um, an existing storage discharge function. This is for another retention uh, detention basin. Um, and you can see it under paired data. It has all of these different um, functions. So storage discharge, we can look at, for instance, uh, what it looks like. So this is the, this is the storage discharge function I've selected. Uh, obviously, if you're designing your own detention basin, you need to specify this storage discharge function corresponding to your storage basin's geometry. Okay, but you can see what it kind of looks like. We have the discharge on the y-axis and cubic feet per second, the storage on the x-axis and uh, acre feet. Um, and you will need to design this as part of the storage basin design, essentially. Yes. Uh, so you can do it from the geometry. So when you're deciding how much to cut and fill, you can figure out uh, first, you know, what the depth area relationship is. And then from that, you can figure out what the um, the depth storage discharge relationship is. So um, you'll have time to do this, right? So I don't expect you to immediately get this right now, um, but that's that's how I would recommend doing it, yeah. You can also use, um, you know, the elevation area method within HECHMS, it just might be a bit more difficult because you need to know the ab absolute elevation of sea level for everything, which can make it more challenging. Okay, but these are, uh, these are all real world engineering problems you'll run into if you're doing this kind of work in practice. So uh, this, is, this is good practice for you. Okay, um, 
I will be walking around today to help you. So if you have questions, I know this is probably a lot of information, but I will be um, helping you. I think the best way to learn this is just to try doing it. So um, I'll be helping you through that process. Uh, and with that, I will give you the rest of class today to work. Uh, so go ahead and flag me down if you have questions, uh, Becky as well, and we will help you uh, as best as we can. All right.